Hi everyone and welcome to this tutorial. In this video I am going to show you how to do the tubular cast on. And the tubular, <laughs> can't even say it, the tubular cast on is called that way because it starts from a tube of knitting which makes it very nice and it goes from front to back uh, very seamlessly. And so this is the tubular cast on on my uh, hat project, which will be a free pattern soon. I also have a little swatch of the tubular cast on here and um, a swatch of the German twisted cast on right here. And I'm going to show you some differences first. The tubular cast on looks amazing. Um, I think it is by far the prettiest uh, cast on for ribbing um, but it is not as stretchy as I would have thought um, if you see the German twisted cast on here um, which I like the stretchiness of but not the looks as it creates some pearl bumps and yeah it's just a very uneven cast on edge that stretches quite a bit um, if you see the tubular cast on, it can stretch, but then it kind of doesn't um, stretch back. Um, it does with, you know, if you kind of <laughs> fold it into shape again, it does uh, go back. So uh, I'm still going to use it for this hat because I find that for a hat, you don't need to stretch the ribbing that often as you might do for socks or mittens. Um, usually when, when it's a hat and you roll it over, uh, you rely more on the stretchiness of this folded over bit instead of the cast on. Um, and then another thing, because usually for the tubular cast on, you uh, do a provisional cast on with some scrap yarn or some waste yarn. Um, a provisional cast on is where you crochet stitches, where you then pick up stitches from in your actual um, yarn that you want to use. Then you knit a few rows um, and then you turn it back and you continue on the the side that you're already knitting on and you pick up stitches from the provisional cast on. Um, I have not done that method before uh, but I think that the method I have done is much easier and I learned this from Laura Lee Beltman and this is the tubular cast on made with Judy's magic cast on. So another cast on where you cast on stitches onto both sides um, but um, instead of having to use waste yarn for the provisional cast on and having to pick up stitches you have those stitches instantly on your needles which I find very uh, satisfying. Now for the tubular cast on done with Judy's Magic Cast On you need two sets of circular needles one in the size for your project uh, and for this hat project I'm using 3.5 millimeter needle but that's really um, uh, it's up to you which size you use and then for the cast on uh, you use a bigger needle. I used a four millimeter but uh, I think if you use a three and a half millimeter for your project uh, you might as well use four and a half or five millimeter um, for your cast on as it's really nice if it's um, just a bit stretchier. So go ahead and take two sets of circular needles. Um, for example, if you want four millimeter for your project, you can use a uh, 5.5 millimeter um, for the cast on. I think I'm gonna use that set. Uh, and if you use 4.5, you can use the six millimeter for your cast on. But there is still a bit of room in here. So I think if your project is on four millimeter, I think you could very well use the six millimeter uh, for the cast on as well. Um, just just try it out and see uh, if you like the results and if you like the results then you know that's what matters so let's take our needles and our yarn and get casting on right so I've taken my four millimeter and 
at my three millimeter um, and I will put the smaller needle to the side for now and cast on with my bigger needle and I'm using Scapius Terrazzo yarn which is a very new yarn and it's 100% recycled. It's 70% recycled wool, recycled wool and 30% recycled viscose. And um, I'm going to do a little swatch with you first and um, even if you want to cast on directly for your project I really advise doing a swatch first because you might want to change uh, some numbers in the cast on later. Uh, so I'm just going to take a yarn tail of about 40 centimeters. You can use a slip knot if you want to, but I want the Judy's Magic cast on to be as seamless as possible, so I'm not going to do that. So I have the yarn tail in front of me and the yarn going to the ball um, right here. And I want to have my needles in my right hand and then put the yarn with the yarn tail down. I want to put that over the uh, back needle. And then I want to twist the yarn so that the yarn tail uh, so that the yarn to the ball is forward and the yarn tail is to the back. And make sure that the yarn crossing in front is that of the yarn ball. So don't twist it like this with the yarn tail forward. We want the yarn ball forward. Right, so we have one stitch on our back needle. And with the yarns twisted correctly, you um, separate them with your thumb and index finger and then you hold the yarns with your remaining fingers. So the bottom needle and the top needle are going to receive their stitches from the opposite direction. So the bottom needle gets its stitch from the top yarn here and the top needle gets its stitch from the bottom yarn here. Right now we have a stitch on the top needle, so our bottom needle needs a stitch. And to do that we're going from under, we're going up between the needles and down. And for the stitch on the top needle, we're going with the bottom yarn, going between the needles from underneath to the top, and then looping around the top. I'm going to do this a few times a bit faster so you can kind of see the rhythm and then explain it uh, slowly again. And be careful that you don't uh, let go of your yarns. And if you do, make sure that the yarn tail is at the back here and the yarn going to the ball is at the front. And then you can see, okay, which stitch is the loosest. It's the stitch around the bottom needle. So now we need a stitch around the top needle. And for this little swatch, I'm just going to add 10 stitches to each side. Or perhaps I'll do a little bit more. 9, 10, Let's do 16. Okay. So you want to count that you have the same number of stitches on top and at the bottom. And you want to make sure, so this is what I often see during Judy's, Judy's Magic Cast On, that um, for example, we just created a stitch around the bottom needle with the top yarn and that people use the same yarn to go around the top needle or that they go around the bottom needle again, for example. So really, um, this cast on requires a lot of attention. Um, so 
yeah if, if you're unsure whether you did it wrong then i really advise to just start over because that's the easiest way to keep track of it um so when we have finished uh with our stitches um i'm just going to hold this yarn at the back here and i'm going to explain a little bit about the number of stitches because uh the number of stitches if you want to cast on for your project and say your project uh requires you to cast on 100 stitches then you want to cast on 50 stitches onto each needle because both of these uh, sets of stitches are going they're kind of going to be zipped together um, so really if you visualize a zipper you're going to use stitches alternating from the one and the other needle um, so you're going to end up with the total stitch count uh, so if your project requires 40 stitches, um, then you want to cast on 20 stitches onto each needle. But now for this little swatch, I've just uh, put 16 stitches on each needle. But for now, this is still just Judy's Magic Cast On, and we will uh, go on to the tubular bit um, a bit later. So you want to hold this yarn tail onto the back and then rotate your needles like this and this is where I often see people uh, uh, turning their work like this and then seeing the pearl bumps if you see the pearl bumps then just rotate your work like this and then make sure that the yarn tail is kind of hanging off to this side but grab it and then just secure it behind the work and now the top and bottom needle have switched and we are going to slide the bottom needle out so that we put these stitches onto the cable which then kind of acts as a stitch holder so just pull it out uh, for far enough so you can turn the tips to each other and now make sure you know where your yarn tail is and where your yarn ball is um, and it, you should have uh, your yarn tail connected to this last stitch if your ball yarn is connected to the last stitch that means you can't knit with you know your yarn going to the ball if that's the case then just knit the first stitch with your yarn tail but if you've done it correctly, uh, your last stitch will be connected to the tail. So we can just knit it with the long yarn. So I'm going to insert, I'm going to actually scoot the stitches a little bit over to the tip. I'm going to insert. And while I insert my needle, my right hand is free and I can uh, use the ball yarn to knit this first stitch and you will notice now that the rest of the stitches of only this side are twisted see so we need to knit through the back and we just knit across these 16 stitches and see all of them are twisted here that has something to do with the way we rotated them onto the needles during the cast on. Right. And now I'm going to tell you a bit about the tubular bit of the cast on because um, after we still need to knit a couple rows but um, this will kind of be the fold of your cast on so now we have knit across one half of the stitches and um, Judy's magic cast on itself counts as two rows or one round um, but for this instance we're going to talk about rows so we've done two rows during the judy's magic cast on and we've just completed the third row um, 
For the tubular cast on, if you want to cast it on for a one by one ribbing, you only need uh, three rows. You could also knit four rows. But for the two by two tubular cast on, you want to knit at least five rows. And I actually knitted uh, six rows for this bit, as that makes it just a little bit more stretchy. And I'm going to show you what happened on my first try of the tubular cast on when I proceeded to the tubular bit with just uh, the one, you know, the third row of knitting. And it looks very, well, very skinny, actually. Um, this tubular cast on looks very puffy and very luscious, scrumptious. And this one, yeah, it also just doesn't look very, um, very neat. Three rows is enough for one by one ribbing, but not for two by two because the, the stitches are stretched further apart. Because we are going to do a two by two uh, swatch, we're going to knit six rows. You could also knit five. Um, you need a minimum of five, but I'm going to knit six again because that worked very well for this hat. Now, and to knit, so we've we've done three rows now, and you can kind of spread your needles apart. If you've lost count and now you can see one V beneath in between the stitches you can see one row of stitches and the stitches on your needles also count as a row each so we have one row here one row between our needles and one row on the other needle so now we are going to knit row four and again we are going to pull out Oh, I'm going to secure these stitches here, otherwise I might pull them off too. So I'm going to pull this, um, pull the bottom needle to the right so that the tips are facing each other. And now we are going to knit this row. And on this row, and for all other rows afterwards, the stitches will not be twisted again. So we can just knit these stitches as normally. And that is four rows. Do you see there's now two? V's between the stitches between the needles and then you count the two rows from the needles so we turn again insert this back into our stitches and then move the bottom needle again so now we move on to the fifth row And if you want, you can skip the sixth row and proceed to the tubular bit. I'm just going to do the sixth row. Right, so these are my six rows complete. And let's do some counting. So we see four stitches between the needles and then one on each. Uh, needle so that makes six rows and now we're going to turn our work again and bring both needles into the stitches and now I'm actually going to turn my work back since it's easier to show you um, if I bring my needles together you can see the beginning of our tubular cast on the this is how it will look it's just a very very nice edging um, right so I'm turning my work so that the needle tips are to the right and very importantly take this yarn tail 
and pull it down between your needles because if you leave it here it's going to get closed in uh, in the cast off and you might think oh that's great uh, that means I don't have to sew in that end but actually no no because uh, <laughs> I've done that before um, if you then stretch the, the cast on um, and your yarn tail is in there uh, the cast on isn't able to stretch back completely because that yarn tail um, obstructs it kind of so you want to move it down so that it is here and out of the way and now we take our smaller needle and so we are now going to zip the stitches together and I am just going to slip them onto the smaller needle and then knit them afterwards. You can also knit them right away. Um, and we will take the knit stitches from the front and the purl stitches from the back needle. And so if you want a knit one, purl one uh, ribbing, you would take one stitch from the front, one stitch from the back, and so forth but we are going to do a two by two tubular cast on and for that um, you're not going to pick up two stitches first and then two stitches here and then two 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 no um, to make it look nicer we're going to pick up one stitch one knit stitch first then two then two so you have one knit stitch on either side and that will just look nicer as the stitches are not being pulled uh, in any direction as much. So, and I'm just going to slip each stitch um, purl wise. So, even the knit stitches, I'm going to slip it purl wise. So, I'm taking one knit stitch and just moving this yarn down here, then two purl stitches. Then I'm rotating to the front again, two knit stitches, and you want to make sure that your stitches of the other needle are not sliding off. Two purl, two knit, and really the worst that can happen here is that you either twist your needle around or that you forget um, where you are. and and you just look closer at your stitches you can see you've just um, picked up two knit stitches and if you pick up purl stitches you see that they are kind of you know you see the purl bumps so you keep on picking up those stitches slipping them onto your smaller circular needle And now you will see you have three stitches left of the knit stitches and two stitches left of the purl stitches and that is correct oops see they're sliding off so two stitches here then two purl stitches and as i said we're finishing with one knit stitch now we're done with the larger needle um, we're going to continue on the smaller needle only so this is um, our final stitch count for the swatch. And as the working yarn is all the way here, we are going to slide our work to the other tip of the circular needle so we can knit. And I'm going to knit these stitches. And even... Even if you remember, okay, I uh, picked up one knit stitch first and then purl stitches, you can just, you can see that this stitch is a knit stitch. And then when we knit that, you see that the next stitch has a purl bump. So oh, bring the yarn forward so we can knit that, uh, purl that. And then you just work all of your stitches this way. 
And then at the end of the round of the row, if you want to knit your project in the round, um, you can join in the round then. And the last stitch. So if you want to continue in the round, move it onto your cable needle, um, the cable I mean, and then pick out a loop from the middle. And then you want, you have to see where the yarn ball is. And where it is not, so this one, you want to move that back into the stitches, and this one, you want to knit it, um, move it forward. So you can start knitting in the round like that. And then you will have a little open space. Let me just show you right here. But you will also have your yarn tail there, so you can close that up with the yarn tail. And that is your tubular cast on with two by two ribbing.